How's it going, Seattle? Data here, and welcome back to the Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode, episode number six, moving into the second half of year number two, the 2022-23 regular season. In the last one, we left off at the halfway point with a record of 19-6-6. Six six. Things did not go well in the slightest to start off the season. It was an extremely rocky start. But actually, with the last 10 games that has been pretty positive, we find ourselves in a wild card spot in the Pacific Division. In the last 10 games, we went 7, 1, and 2, but our special teams have been lacking. We do have some expiring contracts of players you may want to think about moving, as well as the big picture of are we tanking, are we pushing, what are we trying to do? Tarasenko's fully healthy at a point per game, Schwartz is over a point per game, and some of the big boys are really coming through. It's just been some difficulties with some plus minuses especially with the goaltending so what is our course of action here in the second half of our second season after coming off a division championship in our inaugural season so it's been a little over a week since the last episode apologies for that as i was working on the chemistry tutorial video so be sure to check that out if you want to know more about line chemistry in nhl 22 but getting into the comments now of the last one a big idea that we were looking at was do we trade for ethan bear who is an rfa and now that january 1st has passed cannot play this season it would just essentially be trading for his rights to sign him next season and getting him at a discount Vinny says i would definitely look into that ethan bear trade around the deadline thinking about getting him perhaps for kale flurry we were talking about get him signed to a good contract and he does look like a really promising defenseman with the potential of bringing his a game to seattle Let's bounce back and have a really good second half of the season. Epo agrees saying, I would definitely trade Kale Fleury for Bear, but try to squeeze as much assets with the trade as you can since Kale has so much more value. It's not fleecing the system with a player with a salary way before his value, way below his value, since his salary will benefit the Hurricanes for seven years after this one. He signed for like 1.05 for the next eight years. Really don't like cheesing the system, so I don't mind getting him off the team because I never meant to really cheese the eighth year $1 million deal there. The Canes would be the one fleecing the system with a one-for-one -one trade, so we could probably get some more out of it. Mike liked the video, but said a frustrating start to the season. We're just middling out, it seems. We gotta shake things up and make a push, or maybe dump some struggling players and grab some assets. Players that he thinks has to go are Yarncrow, Bailey, and Kale Fleury. Alexiak can stay. He's playing well. Jordan Cairo, we were talking about him. He might be a good option as long as we don't have to sell the farm to get him. Also like Bear, but it's a bummer we have to wait until next year to use him. Also definitely shake up those special teams. Swap around the defense. Mix and mash forwards for the PK. See you for the next one. Go Kraken. Thank you very much, Mike. Scott agrees that the 15% power play is definitely a major issue, and it definitely explains why we were struggling a big one goal four stretch of games. Are there any good power play associates or assistant coaches we could look at? We'll check that out. Jack says, players that need to go. Yarn Crow, negative 11, atrocious, third line player. He's really only going to decline from here. Plus, we know his contract's expiring. Bailey has one more year at $5 million. He's not producing, so it might be time to get rid of him as well. Alexiak and Kale Fleury. He thinks that if we get Ethan Bear, he'll be taking Alexiak's roster spot and his contract's not going to age well. So may as well package them both to Carolina and get a really good return, perhaps a forward prospect coming back our way. The biggest issue with that, I looked into it, is that the Hurricanes don't have the... Uh, salary cap room to make that happen but it is true that alexiak might not be a super long-term kind of guy on this team players to get baron perhaps panamarev or jarvis if we're getting a hurricanes prospect think about jordan Cairo as well he could be a second line center but what don't stretch to get him and for coaching we might need an overhaul as contending teams can't really have a b as their head coach giordano you know he won the jack adams last season might be a good assistant coach, and that might fix the abysmal forward chemistry and performance. So thank you for that, Jack. Moving over to the Discord server now, Maddie, and perhaps friends with Maddie Beneers, says, late to the party, but finally caught up. Number one, don't trade a flurry. I know morale is off, but imagine how much the other flurry would hate you for doing that. Number two, last year was a mirage. This team only really has four forwards deserving of the top six, and only one lower end elite talent, with Beneers eventually going to get there. So don't be fooled by that mirage. 
Number three, I'm team full on fire sale at the deadline, but at the very least don't wipe the cupboard clean to go all in on a mediocre and aging core. Really enjoy the content data. Looking forward to the next episode. Thank you, Maddie. And finishing off the last Discord comment here, coming from Addy. I'm ending with this one because I think it really encompasses a lot of my main thoughts pretty simply here. Quick and to the point. The end of the episode gives me hope. I think a couple of small changes will do the trick. We trade Yarncrow and Flurry for Bear and a veteran third liner. Switch Cout for Donato. Bam. We gonna kill it, baby. So not exactly my exact thoughts, but really encompasses my, you know what, if things don't work out, they don't work out. If we start to fail now in the month of January, we can definitely start to sell. But after going 7-1-2 and two in our last 10, if the team continues to win, well then we can just roll with that. If we trade Kale Flurry, who's our 7th defenseman, for Ethan Bear to get him next season, it's pretty much a wash there. Yes, it hurts to trade one of the Flurry brothers, but at the same time, Kale Flurry, he's our 7th defenseman right now. Him and Hayden aren't playing together at the moment, and they haven't really played much together at all. It's just this uh, season, because last year Kale was in the AHL. So moving on from him now, it might not be a bad idea when his contract is at an, his trade value is at an all-time high. Calais Yarncrow, we said we might as well go and trade him as well because he's on an expiring deal. We won't really have the money to look to extend him as he moves into his early to mid-30s. So I don't want to trade for a veteran kind of third-line guy. We have Eric Stahl. We have other veterans like Bailey on the team. I don't think we need to trade for more veteran players to stock up for the deadline push or anything like that, second half of the season push. But I wouldn't mind a trade for some prospects with the Kale Fleur and Calais Yarncrow move. Maybe get a little bit of depth and then continue to roll with this team. If by the deadline things aren't going well, we can sell more. But if things are going well, then we just continue like that. So here's the deal I'm thinking about with the Carolina Hurricanes, who are 19, 20, and 2. They have a very good team and they do not want to give up on this season just yet. If I say, okay, give me Ethan Bear, RFA, just basically the rights to Ethan Bear, 84 overall, 25 years of age, and I can only use him next season. Give me Ethan Bear, bang. What I'm going to give back your way is Kale Flurry. I know it hurts. I know it's not fun for morale. I know Hayden's not going to be happy about it, but our defense is stacked on this team. It's already going to be tight next season with Ethan Bear coming in if we get him. I don't think there's really room for him on this team, so right now we have to capitalize on his value. Even Hayden Flurry might be not, might not be staying here. So it's not like we've committed to Hayden and now Kale is leaving. Kale Flurry with that great trade value goes back the other way, as well as Kale Yarnkro, who they can use in when it comes to their scoring, as they could use uh, this scoring forward who has 15 goals, I believe, this season. He has like 70, I think it was 78 points in like 123 games. I did the math earlier. So he's been great with us in Seattle. His career has been revitalized. He's been doing well the last couple of years in Nashville. So he's been great, but he's also been a negative 18. And we could use a better guy, not a better player, but like a player who we can commit to longer term for less cap. So we throw him in the deal here, and this is what the Hurricanes say. We're over the salary cap by 2.14 million, but the trade value is definitely in our favor. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm kind of tinkering around with an idea. The Hurricanes don't have a lot of players with a lot of term and low value. The lowest guy is probably Jordan Stahl, but that's still a fair amount of value, and I'm not really interested in Jordan Stahl. Brady Shea signed for two more years. I can't take another defenseman. But what I can do is take a guy with one year left and someone I will definitely just let go to free agency and who actually also becomes my seventh defenseman in Jake Gardner. Brady Shea is too good for seventh D and I can't pay five million next season. But I could just take Jake Gardner as the seventh D and let him go to free agency. That makes the, uh, the cap able to go through. But now the value is still in our favor. So what else do we take back? Now let's go back to rookie skaters now. Sorting by trade value on the rookie skaters. Panamarev, Jarvis, I don't know about, I don't know. It's tough because I could take a guy with more value like Panamarev, for example, 73, 20 years old. Or I could kind of take a lesser pros, uh, prospect and maybe a Ryan Suzuki or even a Dominic Bach. 75-22, you know, or a 72-21, and I can throw in a draft pick with that, perhaps. Maybe a second round pick? Yeah, maybe a second. So I could take a better prospect, or I can try and rely on my scouting and get a better guy in the second round. So I'd rather take 
a prospect and a second, I think, over just putting all my eggs in Panamarev's basket. Ryan Suzuki and a second round pick with Ethan, the rights to Ethan Bear, and then Jake Gardner is my seventh D-man. You get a good scoring middle six forward and Kale Fleury at one million for seven more years after this one, who could be who was in your top six and gonna move into your top four on a team that's strapped for cash. You're very lucky right now. So Carolina, what do you say to this deal right here? You're quite far off in value. Really? Quite far off in value? That's odd. What if I throw you a fourth round pick in 2024? And then in 2024, you send back something else. Uh, 2024, you send back a fifth. We swap picks in 2024. A fourth for a fifth. Still a bit off in value. All right, we'll try the fourth for a seventh then. What do you say to this? Still a bit off? Okay. Straight up fourth round pick next season. Uh, this would work, would have put Steven Lorenz on waivers. What's up with Steven Lorenz? 75 overall, 26 years of age, bottom six potential. Okay, so that means I'll take someone else on your NHL roster at the bottom here. Uh, I'd probably take Faust over Martinook. So, okay, throw in Jesper Faust on this deal. Uh, can we just do that straight up with a fourth round pick? Let me try a fifth. I don't know if... Do they see him as someone who has value or negative value? A fifth in 2024, still a bit off in value. Can I retain some salary instead of having to give you picks? Would that make you happier since you're a team that's strapped for cash? Maybe you want to make some deadline moves. So we'll go 50% retained on Calais Yarncrow. Now what do you say to this, Carolina? Trade accepted. Thank you very much, the Carolina Hurricanes. We get Faust. We got a good pick. We got a good prospect. We got Ethan Bear next season. I think that is a very, very good trade for us. So let me fix up this lineup quickly. Pretty much what's going to happen is that we're going to get Julien Gauthier into the lineup. Uh, I'm going to send down Suzuki. I'm going to probably call up Kaut as well because there might be another deal, but... Let me just fix this quickly. All right, so the lines are fixed up like that. Eric Stahl moves up to third line center, takes over some power play time as well, taking a lot of um, him and Benier is sharing a lot of Yarn Crow's old spots. Martin Kaut, I called him up from the AHL, 23 years of age, medium top six, got him in the Landeskog deal at the expansion draft. I want him to get some NHL action. He has now played 123 games in the AHL, getting 86 points in that time. I want to see him in the NHL now. Hopefully he does better than Julien Gauthier did with his one goal, one assist, negative seven in 23 games. Faust is kind of like a 13th, 14th forward. Gardner's our seventh defenseman, and we're gonna keep rolling like that moving forward here. Now I just gotta fix the AHL lines. So the chemistry for the minor league team so the chemistry for our minor league team is not great. What I'm going to do is hire a new AHL head coach. I have to hire him as an associate coach and do the big game of musical chairs. But the thing is, when I'm in the when I'm focused on my AHL team, I don't really care so much about the record, more about the performances. So I'd rather have a team with good chemistry that scores a lot of points and doesn't really do super well than one that scores like you know 40 30 40 50 points each and they win by committee and they go all the way to the end and win the Calder Cup because what I'm looking for is individual growth not necessarily team success like I said so at the moment with the lines as I like them it's not ideal with the plus two then negative ones all the way down defensive chemistry not ideal either so hopefully changing up coaches will fix that up a little bit so that means this guy becomes the goalie coach this guy becomes the assistant coach and that guy becomes the associate coach fire the goalie coach hire him blah 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 musical chairs but now as a couple of comments said we got to think about the coaching staff in the nhl as well giordano here aiden giordano has been a great head coach for us 68 44 and 11 is his record with us a's for offense and defense he won the jack adams last year 59.8 winning percentage. He's fine. He's great. The only issue is he is a B-rated coach. And in this EA world, a B-rated coach is not ideal. However, his team fit is 70%. Loves Alexiak, loves Chalowski, Bean, Manson, Palat. That's why we get so many pluses on the defense, by the way. But McCann, not as much. Not a huge deal. Beneers, he doesn't really like him in the second line role, which that's probably the most concerning thing. But nonetheless, a 70% fit. If we go and look at the coaches who are available here, there's only a few NHL head coaches who are out here. I'd want to hire someone with an A rate. So actually, it's only down to these two guys, Aubin and Paré. So Jean Aubin, he has a 67% team fit. And Philippe Paré, or Par, he, uh, he has a 63% team fit. Chalowski loves him, all that. 
but really Jean Aubet, really a, love, a lot of love for Trocek, much more love, well not much more, but more love for Matty Beniers. I could see Jean Aubet being a good head coach. We have three less percent in the team fit, but we go from a B to an A minus. Let me try and offer him whatever, big contract, who knows how long we keep him, but eight years, NHL head coach at 4.5 million. He's been waiting in free agency this whole time. The Devils didn't uh, re-sign him last year, actually they fired him. Jordano has been great. I don't want to fire him because the thing is I'm thinking about a coach who has to have good special teams. That's as well. I didn't mention that. Jordano B B for power play, B minus for penalty kill. Bartley B minus A plus. Hickey B minus A minus. And the goalie coach terrible but good teaching and coach influence. Obey on the other hand, looking at his attributes, has A for power play and the B for penalty kill. So that would be very much more helpful when it comes to the special stuff. teams that were not simulating well last time. So I don't know who I would fire. Hickey, he's not great for the power play. Hickey, actually, yeah, Hickey's not great. Timonen's the worst, but he has the teaching and the coach influence. I'm not sure how much, it's really difficult to know. Do I need co more coach influence or do I need more power play? I don't know, but I'm going to try and take a risk here. I'm going to fire Timonen. He's been good. Nico Timonen, we just hired him, unfortunately. So I'm going to fire him. Demote Hickey to the goalie coach, demote Bartley to the assistant coach, demote Giordano to the associate coach, then re-promote him to interim NHL head coach, and then he'll be put down to associate if uh, Aubin comes and signs with us. So that was a lot of stuff to do. We moved out a couple pieces. We fixed up some chemistry. We'll see if the coaches sign on. Let's advance a couple days to the game against the Capitals and see if anything develops in those couple days. Not Oh yeah, Radic Stefan. He's going to be the new head coach down in the AHL. So how does the line chemistry look now? It was plus two, negative one, negative one, negative one. Actually, I forgot I need to do musical chairs here. I need to swap everybody around. So Rhinus here, who has the lowest chemistry of staff chemistry. Okay, fire him. Then you demote the head coach to goalie coach. Stefan goes to, excuse me, to AHL head coach. This guy goes back to AHL associate coach. And now the AHL goalie coach stays vacant and chemistry is at staff chemistry is at 79%. Then we go to edit lines. We had plus two, negative one, negative one, negative one. Now we have zero, plus one, zero, and zero. Not great. Actually, I think it's Shaw holding it back. Maybe I can fix it up a bit. And defense, zero, plus one, zero. Special teams were like negative three and negative five everywhere. So, okay, now zero and plus one. It was negative three, negative three previously. And pony kill, plus two, plus one. Okay, so better for special teams. Let me see if I can do anything for the actual lineup. All right, plus one, plus two in the top six. Not bad, better than nothing. Special teams, zero plus one, like we said. And yeah, probably, okay, whatever. It's better than what we had. I'll just take what I can get and move on with my life. Uh, we're waiting to see what happens with the NHL. Hopefully that can fix our forward chemistry as well with the NHL head coach. Let's go through this game against the Capitals who are 19, 16, and five, almost an identical record to ours. Uh, I was going to accept the offer, but the role you offer is already filled. What are you saying? I don't know why you're saying that. I have an interim head coach. Let me go and try and fix that. Capitals, we beat them four to one. We'll take the dub, win number 20. Okay, hopefully that should be fixed now. Giordano back to interim NHL head coach. Let's try and get Obey in here. Continuing to simulate. Next game is up against the San Jose Sharks on their Pacific Division matchup. In the Pacific, they're just at, actually we're tied in points. So you know what? This will be a good game to go and see at Climate Pledge Arena to start up the episode. After the 4-1 win, let's go see our first slow sim of the second half of the season. First period, 1-0 for the Kraken. It's Ryan Donato scoring against his old team. Second period, 4-2, yes. Palat makes it 2-0. Gregar and Balser is tied up at 2, but then Vinny Trocek scores twice in 6 minutes, and it's 4-2 Kraken headed into the third period. Our first line center coming through, but Rudolph Balser scores his second of the game. It's 4-3 now. Power play Kraken gets killed off. Another power play opportunity for us early in this third period, but killed off once again by San Jose. One goal game, under 10 to go, out shooting them 33-22. to No shots in the last like five minutes for either team. Under five to go, up by one, slim lead, two minutes left, 19 seconds, and we hang on tight for the 4-3 victory. That was a close one. 35 shots on net, Reimer stood tall enough, Trocek first star of the game with those two goals, the captain Vladimir Tarasenko with two assists getting third star, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in there for the Sharks, let's go to Rogers Arena, hopefully Obey should sign on by now, uh, you have not offered me as many years, I offered you eight years, 
You have not offered me as many years as I am looking for. I offered you eight years. I'm not allowed to offer you more. What do I have to do to get you to sign this contract? All right, if he does not sign this contract, we're just moving on without him because we seem to be winning. We're 8-0-2 in our last 10. Rivalry game here against the Vancouver Canucks in Vancouver. We lose 3-1 against them. Now we're taking on the Leafs at home. The cash you offered was the tipping point for me to accept this offer. All right, so Jean Aubin is on board. Giordano's been doing great, but I think he'll do better in an associate coaching role. Now let's see how is the chemistry affected by Jean Aubin being our head coach. Forward chemistry is plus one, zero, 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 all the way down. Defense is zero, plus one, plus two. Now remember, we can always go back to Giordano if we want to. All we have to do is we can fire someone else and demote Obey to associate coach even. Maybe that would be better because he's still going to be up there for, uh, yeah, you know what? Light bulb moments in my head. That wouldn't be a bad idea at all. So you know what? Let's do some experimentation here. Why the heck not? Jean Aubin demote you to goalie coach. Giordano promote you to NHL head coach. And Aubin promote you to NHL associate coach. There you go. You know what? Maybe that is helpful. Our head coach gives us our chemistry and our new associate coach gives us an A on the power play as opposed to the previous Bartley who had a B minus and our goalie coach that had a D. So you know what? That might be hacking the system. I don't know what, but it might be helpful for us because it keeps our chemistry good and it gives us a boost to our special teams. Huh? Let's try it out. Here we go up against the Toronto Maple Leafs for 24, 17 and three Bruins have fired their head coach Dawson Ramsey. Uh, Tarasenko with back spasms. Hey, there's always something for this guy. There is always something. So Julien Gauthier will draw into the lineup. Um, yeah, yeah, Julien Gauthier. Let me mix and match. All right, Monsieur Gauthier, I'm giving you a good opportunity here. It's going to be Gauthier, Appleton, and Kaut down on that fourth line. Kaut, four games, no points, negative two so far. Not exactly running with his NHL opportunity, but let's keep going. Beniers will play top line. 4-3 shootout win against the Maple Leafs there. Let's start moving into the month of February. And actually, we could take on the Carolina Hurricanes. Coincidentally, our next game is up against them. We can go see Yarn Crow. 22-22-2 are the Hurricanes. I can't wait until June hits. I want to see what Ethan Bear's contract is going to cost us. They're now 22-23-2. Oof. So they didn't really move anybody out, Faust and Gardner, but they brought in Fleury and Yarn Crow. Doesn't need to be helping them too much at the moment. First period here, one nothing. Brett Pesci short-handed. That's a killer. Second period, two to two. Now Palat ties it up. Jaskin comes right back, and Martin Kaut scores his first career NHL goal. His first as a Kraken ties this game up as two at two in his fifth NHL game. He heard what we were saying, and he ties this up. Shots are 19 to 13. But we're still in this. On the power play now. Opportunity for us with the special teams a bit higher ranked. Such a long power play, but nothing comes from it. Another power play opportunity. Nothing again. Power play for the Hurricanes. We killed that one off, thankfully. Five minutes to go. Still a tie game. Not a lot of shots from either team here. With a minute to go, 2-2. Two to two, We're going to hop into some overtime action. Shot tied at 22. And it's a 2-2 two -two game. Two minutes to go. And we're headed to a shootout. In the shootout, the Hurricanes take it as Sveshnikov gets the winner. At least we come away with a point. That was a low offensive output kind of game. A bit of an odd one. 3-2 shootout loss. Let's move into the month of February. Like I said, we'll go to the 12th against the Canucks. And that'll be where I update our current scouting assignments. Alexiak and a fourth for two thirds. No, thank you. I saw there was a deal earlier that involved us getting a second round pick. But Alexiak's more of a guy I'd want to move in the offseason. Not really right now. 6-3 win against the Canadians and a 3-2 win against Columbus. That's very nice. Then we get shut out and spanked 7-0 by the Maple Leafs. So how do you do right there? Rangers, we lose 2-1 against them in overtime. Two seconds. Okay, here's interest, something interesting. Alexiak, a third and a fourth for two seconds. And those are late seconds, though. A third and a fourth for two seconds. I don't know. I think I feel like we could get this. I feel like we could get Alexiak a third and a fourth for two seconds at the draft. I don't think we need to feel pressure to do that right now. I think that deal is still going to be there. Overtime loss, 4-1 loss. We're 24-19-8. and eight. I'm going to update the scouting reports, and then we're going to come back in just a moment. All right, scouting is finally done, and we can continue a little bit. Let's move to this next showdown against the Sharks. We'll see what the Pacific Division is looking like by the time we get there. Do a little four-game series. 
5-4 shootout loss against the Canucks. We've been having struggles in the shootout. Tarasenko is finally back to the lineup. Veneers is up to an 82 overall, and he has 23 goals and 16 assists. Martin Couch is at one goal, one assist in 12 games. Goatsi, did he do anything? Got one more assist. So I'm going to take out Goatsi and put back Tarasenko. All right, good to continue there. Hopefully Tarasenko can help us continue to fight here. 3-1 loss against the LA Kings. Hold on, after you leave the lines, you need to come back into the calendar because there's a little bit of a glitch there. All right, now we continue. The Blues are 19, 33, and 3. Maybe that Cairo idea could it could work out at this point. 5-3 victory there. Alexiak and a third for a second. Tucker Tynan and Bakanov. Interesting offers. Everyone wants Alexiak out here. Then a 3-1 win there against the Flames. There's a back-to-back -back there. So 26, 20, and 9 is now the record. The Sharks are right behind us. Actually, they're a little further behind us, but a huge four points here just in terms of these are very doable if we can get these. First one is on the road. We win four to three. Second one will slow sim. We're at 27, 20, and nine. We're on a three-game winning streak. Let's keep this rolling before we go on the eastern swing to Montreal. First period, 2-0 Sharks, Burns, and Cousins. Second period, 3-1. McCann on the power play to bring us within one, but then Vlasic restores a two-goal lead. We're out shooting San Jose by three, 23-20. But well, we're down by two, and now down by three as Evander scores on the power play, but then Ryan Pulak restores the two-goal deficit. 4-2 Sharks, power play for them. We kill that off. Halfway through this third period, out shooting them 31-24, but still down 4-2. Grubauer... Killing us out here. Okay, there's Bailey. Brings us within one. The alternate captain. Power play late in the game. Nothing comes from it. Pull that goalie. Two minutes to go. Final chances. And it's Hurdle. Ah, oh, Hurdle with the empty netter. We outshoot San Jose 36 to 27. Ah, oh, but we lose five to three. Cousins going to assists. Oh, man. Brutal loss. At least we got one win, but we come away just calling it a wash there against San Jose. 27, 21, and nine now. We'll sim up to the game against Montreal here. Uh, the Canadians are 34, 22, and 3. It's, this is making it very difficult to make a decision by the trade deadline here. The most difficult thing is the goaltending, as Grubauer has been killing me. I don't get how he can be playing so many games and still have a sub-900 save percentage and over 3 goals against average after 42 games played as an 86 overall with those X factors. So I'm going to try Malcolm Subban against the Canadians here. By the way, auto-rotate goalie was off for a little bit. All those games that we last saw since the beginning of this episode have been Philip Grubauer in nets, except for Subban if he came in in relief. Up against Montreal Canadiens, the team that drafted his brother PK. They are 6-4-0 in their last 10. We're 4-4-2, four, four, and two, and we're, what, 4-1 and one in our last 5? So let's try and get back on the winning streak here. First period, 0-0. Second period, 2-1 Canadians, Anderson and Suzuki, but Vinny Trocek scores for us. We're now the team that has Nick Suzuki's brother, Ryan. So we'll see if that makes some rivalries, if he can make the Kraken lineup in the future. Third period, we're down by one. Power play for the Canadians. We kill that off. Shots 27-20 in our favor. Power play opportunity for us. Of course, Carey Price is standing tall now. We can only score one goal on over 30 shots, but they can score two on 20. Two minutes to go now. Final push. Final. 33 to 27 the shots. Price makes 32 saves. Subban did great. I don't know why we can't get any goals going here. Man. 27, 22, and 9. And now the Pacific is all of a sudden becoming competitive. Plus minuses have been weird here. 0 for Bean. 2 for Pulak. 6 for Alexiak. But then negative 5 for Manson. 10 for Chalowski. And 10 for Flurry. So I don't know where this is coming from. I'm going to try just mixing things up according to that. Let's go a bit crazy here. Let's go Alexiak, Bean, first pair. That's going to be already a pretty crazy. Manson and Pulak, third pair. No, that's a bit too crazy. Let's try Manson, uh, Chalowski and Pulak, second pair. Flurry and Manson on the third pair. I don't know. Let's just try that out. Let's put Subban back in nets as well. And for the forward lines, I'm going to try Kaut on the third line. He's really getting... He's not doing anything with seven minutes a night. I need to give him more time than that. Uh, Donato can go to the fourth line. He has a negative nine. Eric Stahl is the third line center. is probably what's hurting us a lot as well. He has 18 points. Matty Beniers has been good. 25 goals from him. But he needs to support that second line. I can't move him up to the first line. I need him on that second line to support the scoring there. 
So let's try and simulate this game against the San Jose Sharks now. We really need to get something going against them. Uh, they are not too far behind us. They're three points behind us. So a win would be very much appreciated. We're 3-5-2 and two in our last 10. We lose 4-2. to two. Dallas Stars are 32, 20, and 9. We win 7 to 4. Last game before the trade deadline here. Last game before the deadline. Here we go. Final chance against the 45, 14, and 2 Blackhawks, who are 8, 1, and 1 in their last 10. If you want to tell me that this team has some fight, this is the time to have a statement game and say, yes, we have fight. First period, 1 0. Hayden Flurry. Okay. Second period, 2 1. Chalowski, I love these defensemen. The defensive changes are helping. Mitchell scores for the Hawks. We're out shooting them 27-16. And it's 2-1 Seattle. Okay, up by one in the third. Let's see if we can extend it. It's only Hayden Fleury and Dennis Chalowski on this team who seem to have passion. We're doubling the Hawks' shots right now. Power play for Chicago. And Patrick Kane's going to score on the power play. Shots are 36-20. 2-2 game. Power play Seattle. Killed off by the Hawks. Three minutes to go. Two minutes left, and Patrick Kane. There it is. There it is. Three goals on 26 shots. We score two on 38. Once again, shots are coming. Goals are not. Flurry makes 36 saves. Kane scores two goals, game tying and game winning. And that's going to be it. Wow. 60 points in 61 games for Jaden Schwartz. Yet the rest of the team, after the first line, Matty Beniers just drop off a cliff. 60 and 61, 58 and 61, 55 and 49, 48, 44, but then we start going down, 33, 31, and then we go off the cliff right here. Donato, 23 with a negative 6, Stahl, 20 with a negative 8, Manson, 17 with a negative 4, Appleton, 14, Faust hasn't even played for us, I should probably bring Faust in, plus 16 for Hayden Fleury, Tanev, 8 points, negative 8. Maybe Gardner comes in on defense. I don't know. Goatsi, three points, negative nine for Kaut in 20 games. Three points, negative 10 in 31 games for Goatsi. So maybe Kaut's on the third line is helpful. But I don't know what to say here. Maybe moving out Ryan Donato and Eric Stahl would be an idea for us. A better third line. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, maybe it's pieces that help us moving forward. Phil Grubauer has been absolutely horrible. He has been atrocious. So I'm going to explore the trade market. Moving into the trade deadline here and see if anything makes sense for a team that could go either way right now. Here's something I'm considering from the Ottawa Senators. They're 30-27-7 and, and their starting goalie is 83 overall Matt Murray backed up by Philip Gustafson. When I went to the trade finder, they offered me two seconds and a no-name prospect. Could I throw in Philip Gustafson? Medium starter potential. He can be our backup, maybe become something more. Medium starter potential, a legend in the Ottawa Senators franchise mode Twitch series we did. He is 8, 7, and 5 in his NHL career. Always simulates well in past games. I give you your new starting goalie. You give me a second this year, a second next year, as well as a third this year. How close would this be? Sweeten it just a touch. So this would be great for our draft pick situation because we're not necessarily selling off, but we'd have four seconds in this year's draft. We're really going to be stocking up the cupboards here, which is what is most important in this franchise. Could I throw you, I don't know, Sweeten it just a touch, they said. So let me try giving you my seventh in 2024. How close does this get us here, Ottawa? Sweeten it just a touch again. I wouldn't mind giving you two sevenths instead of having to give you a sixth this year or something. So I'll give you Arizona seventh and our seventh. What do you say now, Ottawa? Still just a touch. Let's go three sevenths instead. What do you say to this? Trade accepted. Wow. Okay, Philip Grubauer, you are not doing well. I wish you the best over in the Eastern Conference. Malcolm Subban, eat your vitamins and get ready. You're going to be our starter from here on out, unless something else happens. I'm not sure. We get some beautiful, beautiful draft picks from the Ottawa Senators. They're willing to part with them. They really want to start in goalie. They're a team that was doing well, but could have been doing better. So we'll see if that helps them out, and we'll track it till the end of the year. So looking at the draft pick situation now, we have our first four seconds, two thirds, and then a fifth and a sixth in this year's draft. Next year, we have a first, two seconds, then the third, fourth, and sixth. 
and then everything else normal from then on out. This is going to be a strong draft for us. We do have some salary cap room now. We have uh, like 6.2 million or so. And I'm not really done yet, though. I wouldn't mind making a couple other moves, seeing what the market would be for a guy like Ryan Donato, for example. What are teams thinking when it comes to Ryan Donato? A lot of offers, third and fourth, basically. Nick Felino, Clifton, Strawman, Ghost, third and a fifth. I might just go picks here for Donato because he wasn't who I thought he would be. And, uh, you know, I gave him the chance. I like that he had good growth over the offseason, but I wouldn't mind just dumping him and getting some different people in the lineup because we have some people who are going to get coming up next year as well. Barry Boulet, etc. Tristan Jarry on an expiring deal. But, I, you know, we just traded for Gus. It wouldn't really make sense to take in another goalie. Uh, I said I wasn't sure it was going to happen, but now I think I am. Subban with Gus, and we'll go to the end of the year like that. Hugo Elmfeld would be a nice goalie prospect to have in our system because the Lightning definitely want to dump him. Huh, Hugo Elmfeld with his medium starter potential. How does he look? Lightning are a winning team, that's for sure. They wouldn't mind getting some depth. 71 overall at 21 years of age. Not doing very well down in Syracuse, actually. Yikes. In 32 games played in the last two years, he is 8, 18, and 2. No, you know what? I'm going to pass on Alan Felt. I don't like those numbers. A bit scary. Very small sample size in the minor leagues, but scary. So a third and a fourth from Boston seems to be the best deal that we're getting here. It would make sense to send Donato back to a team he's already played on as well. They know what they're getting. And actually, you know what? Why would they want him? They're a losing team. 25-33. No, that doesn't make sense. But Toronto's offering me the same thing, actually. Yeah, Toronto makes sense for them. They're 33, 23, and 4. Let's try and make a deal that makes sense here. They want to give me their third. Let's see if I can squeeze out two thirds. Let's just go crazy here. A third this year and a third next year. Isn't efficient at all. Understandable. Let's try the third this year and the fourth next year. Still too far off. We'll go third and fifth. Lock it in there. Still, Sweden, just hold on. What's going on here? You're offering me more in the trade finder. Don't try and play games with me here. Here we go. Trade finder, Toronto... Uh, a third and a fourth. Now you don't want to give that to me? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, too few skaters. No problem. So thank you, Toronto. We'll take the third and a fourth. Continue to put more cans of soup and peas and corns in the cupboard of prospects that we have. Lots of future potential. We got to strike gold on some of those. Last deal I'm thinking about is maybe just moving Eric Stahl out to a contender as well. I think that's a deal that would make sense as well, but no trades are even found. So, I guess we'll keep Eric Stahl. I don't know. I wouldn't mind calling up, like, Gambrel or Barry Boulet. Actually, really, Gambrel would be the guy that I want to call up to get fourth-line center action. And we move someone on the fourth up to the third. Yeah, I'm going to try to dump Eric Stahl here to a contender. Again, another deal that makes sense. We're not necessarily, tr like, selling off entirely. If this team that we have after the deadline still does well, that's fantastic. We got our draft picks. We're happy. But if not, our own draft pick continues to get better, and we call it a year either way. So let's try and get Eric Stahl his cup. We'll send him to the Chicago Blackhawks. They have just enough cap room. They're 46, 14, and 2. What do you say, Chicago? A fourth and a fifth? No, I'm just going to be crazy. How about just the fourth? Not even. And seventh? Not even close. So you know what? I don't need to trade Eric Stahl. I can retain salary if you want, but I'm not going to uh, trade you a seventh and Eric Stahl to get a seventh back. Uh, still trade rejected, not worth my time, so Eric Stahl, guess you're staying here, sorry about that. It doesn't make sense that nobody wants him, but I think that's it moving into the deadline here. We're going to keep everyone else that we have on our team, and this is the squad for the for the rest of the year. Gauthier and Kaut will make the lineup. Uh, I would have really wanted to get Gambrel in this lineup. I don't know, maybe Tanev is a guy who goes, but he's, he has term. So we don't, we're not forced to make a move on him. flurry has been good. I don't know, maybe if there's somebody in the NHL. Oh, Foss and Garner. No, okay, you know what? I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Let's keep on going. Let's go see how this team does up against the Edmonton Oilers. We have a few more picks in the cupboard, like we said. Got that third and whatever, third and fourth from the Maple Leafs. We'll keep on simulating, see if any teams around the NHL made other big splashes. And none were made. I'm not sure what's up with my screen and why it says regular season. Simulated here against the Oilers. Okay, question mark. Let's see how we do against them. I'm not sure why it didn't show up on the screen. That's an odd glitch. First period, 1-1 one, one game. Matty Beneers on the power play. Then Connor McDavid on the power play himself. Malcolm Subban, I'm relying on you, big boy. Second period, 3-1. Brandon Tanev and Andre Palat on the power play. Both power play goals. All three of our goals tonight on the power play against Phoenix Copley. 
3-1 for the Kraken, up by two on the Edmonton Oilers. Power play Edmonton, they scored earlier, and McDavid now his second of the night, both in the power play. Tyson Berry ties it up about less than a minute later. And then Ryan, another one, that's three goals in like two minutes now. 4-4 though, the captain comes back, says we still have a chance in this game. Tied up at four, power play Kraken, now power play Oilers. We kill that one. Shots are 32-29 for Edmonton with under five to go. 4-4 game, power play Kraken late, final minute, gets killed off. We're headed to overtime. You know what? Shots 36-31 Edmonton, 4-4 game. Let's see some action. Here in Edmonton, Trocek and McDavid at the dot at the Rogers Center. Let's try and get this extra point in the new look Kraken. A little less of firepower on this team, but a lot of grit and a lot of players who want to prove something to this league after winning the Pacific last year. Tarasenko up to Bean. He has a chance with Trocek. Vinny Trocek back to Tarasenko at the point. Looks... Oh, Trocek! Bean! Easy pad save, though. Here's Dreisaitl. Gonna circle back in his own zone. Gets double team. Jake Bean's pinching deep. Tarasenko fighting low with him. Tarasenko looking in front for Trocek. Redirection. Big save. Copley on the doorstep. Barry can't get it out of the zone, but now he does. It's a two-on-one for Dreisaitl and McDavid. Up against Tarasenko. Dreisaitl can't get the shot. Big block from Bean. Open net for Barry. That definitely would have been a goal. Jake Bean now leading the charge. Here he comes. Oh, but it goes just offside. Under two to go. Schwartz in the corner. Beniers, one-timer Pulak. Huge save from Copley. Schwartz back off the boards. Beniers in the corner. Pulak again! Phoenix Copley making huge saves with under 40 seconds to go now. Darnell Nurse looking in front. No, it's a great defensive play by Jane Schwartz. Beniers coming one-on-one. -on -one. The second unit still out there, but Dreisaitl gets the puck away from him. He's going on a breakaway now. Leon Dreisaitl one-on-one -on -one with Malcolm Subban. Smooth move, but Schwartz was back uh, soon enough to break up the deke. McDavid is gloved by Malcolm Subban. That'll be all she wrote unless he gets a quick shot off here. Glove save Subban, and that'll be it for overtime. Eventful and good opportunities for both sides, but 4-4 four four headed to the shootout. Shots end 40-39 to 39 for Edmonton, so both goalies putting on a show, both low overall goalies as well. So here we are in the shootout, Copley against Subban, Vladimir Tarasenko starting it up. Here we go, Tarasenko walking in, looking to get him to move, and he does! Look at that, the forehand, backhand, I don't know why it says 26 goals this season when it's a shootout goal. Smooth little move to go to the backhand, and a timely little tuck. Chance now for the captain for the Oilers now. Connor McDavid coming in on Malcolm Subban. He's going offside according to the game. There's so many glitches. Nice blocker save from Subban sticking with the play. Vinny Trocek's coming up now. Trocek, the right-handed shooter, coming in on Copley. Goes for the shot and scores and squeaks through. Look at that. Just goes for it and Copley gets a piece of it. Let me see this again. Gets a piece of it, I believe, but trickles upstairs not sure what the physics on that one was but we'll take it and now the Oilers have to score it is Leon Dreisaitl with uh, the team on his back Leon oh my goodness what a goal it's Merrick Malik out there oh Leon Dreisaitl goes between the legs and Malcolm Subban gets bamboozled what? and the Oilers have life what a goal now Jane Schwartz, though, does have a chance to win it to go 3-for-3 three three here for the Kraken, and he does! The Seattle Kraken win it in the shootout as Copley was strong but gives up three goals on three attempts. Another backhand uh, uh, goal. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, oh, nice helmet, by the way, from Malcolm Subban. Another executed, that's the word. Another backhand shot and goal executed. We'll take the 3-2 win, excuse me, the 5-4 win in the shootout. A great overtime, some fun time in the shootout. McDavid gets the first star of the night. Tarasenko is third star. We come away with the two points, and you love to see that for the new look Seattle crack. A little bit stripped away, but still passion and grit. Continuing to simulate now, we'll head back to the calendar here in the month of March. Let's go see a nice division matchup deeper here. Let's go, yeah, let's go see Vegas in a couple of weeks' time after we play these next five games. So first game against Vegas in Las Vegas. We win 3-2 in the shootout. That's huge. Victor Mete going on waivers from Ottawa. Hmm. Medium top 6D, 78 overall. Uh, signed for one more year after this one at 1.245. Because really, our, we have Lozo in the system. We have Wood. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Oh, I like Victor Mete a lot as well as a Habs fan. Uh, but do we need him? You know what? What the heck? Worst case, he just plays in the AHL. 
Not he's not going to be a seventh defenseman. He could be a AHL guy just to have him. Three to win. That was win number thirty for us before we get shut out by the Flames one to nothing. Continuing on now, the Hawks are looking for win number fifty, and they don't get it though. As we spoil the show and win five to two, then we lose six to three the next game against the Dallas Stars. Minnesota Wild, they're thirty two twenty nine something. We beat them three two in overtime. We're thirty two twenty six and nine. We're pushing for the playoffs, my friends. Up against the forty three twenty one and six Vegas Golden Knights, who we beat three two in the shootout a couple of weeks ago. Every game matters. Let's try and get another two points here. Stay strong. First period, 0-0. Second period, 1-1. Eric Stahl, he's here. We wanted to trade him to a contender. He said, no, I already am on a contender. Howden scores for Vegas. It's 1-1 headed into the third period. Power play for Vegas early in the third, but we kill that off. Five minutes in, the game still 1-1, but then Eric Stahl scores his second of the night. Shea Theodore ties it up on the power play. That's a huge goal from Stahl. It's a hat trick for Eric Stahl. Eric Stahl scores again a minute and a half later and just 10 seconds, 11 seconds after Theodore. Five minutes left in the third. Power play Vegas. We kill that off. Eric Stahl's on the penalty kill too. And we take it 3-2 to the final. Eric Stahl wins it for us with a hat trick. Puts the team on his back. Three goals, five hits. Subban, 29 saves. Bailey, two assists. What a night for the Seattle Kraken. Eric Stahl is the hero, getting a hat trick. Oh my goodness, in front of the home fans, no less. Huge two points for us, and we are still in this race. Oh, wow. Let's go see the LA Kings after that one. What a win for the team, and Eric Stahl is the man that we can thank. Edmonton Oilers, we beat them 4-3 in the shootout. Anaheim Ducks, here's the team right in front of us. We beat them 3-2 in the shootout as well. Now the Kings, who are five points behind us. I'll just sim through that one. Let's keep on going. Let's keep this party rolling here. That's a huge dub. Alexiak, mild concussion out until April 1st. I mean, uh, Jake Gardner is going to be coming into the lineup here. Look at this ragtag bunch of bellows. Look at this. What a team. So Alexak off that top pair is going to hurt. Chalowski is a plus two now. His plus minus has gone down. Negative four for Pulak. Plus 14 for Flurry. Negative three for Manson. And Bean's a plus nine. So you know what? Chalowski, let's go top pair Chalowski Bean. Then let's go Flurry Pulak. And then we'll go Gardner Manson on the third pair. He'll play his first games as a Seattle Kraken member. And his best uh, fit is on the third pair, so that's all right. Jake Gardner, welcome to Seattle. And against the LA Kings, we beat them three to one. Huge wins are coming here. These are huge wins. And a four three win against the Avalanche. One, two, three, four, five, six game winning streak. We are 37, 26 and nine. We are in a wild card spot. One point behind the Canucks, tied with the Ducks, Two points ahead of the Oilers. This is just insane. Let's move to the final week of the season. Let's move to there against the LA Kings. Up against the Blues, who are 29-42-3. and three. We beat them 4-1. to one. That's seven wins in a row now for the Kraken. Seven wins in a row. We move out Grubauer. We move out Donato. We just take our boys. We get Kaut and Gotsi uh, in the lineup. Subban. I wonder how Gus the Bus has been doing. Uh, let me see, how did Gardner do? He only played like one or two games. What did he do for us here? Uh, three games, actually. Three games and a plus two. Very nice, Mr. Gardner. We will remember that when the time comes, if and when the time comes for another injury. Let's get Alexiak back in the lineup. He's been very solid for us. The six foot seven behemoth. He's a plus 13 for us. Good thing we didn't trade him, I don't. I think. I, I'm going to say right now, I think it was a good thing we didn't trade him. one nothing shutout victory against the Wild. 5-2 win against the Predators. Then a 7-3 loss against the Devils. That ends the winning streak. So that, And then a 3-2 win in the shootout against uh, the Jets. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 game winning streak. Perhaps the longest in franchise history, I believe. 9 game winning streak. And we are 10-1-0 in our last 11 games. Let's move to the final week of play here. One more game up against the Colorado Avalanche. And this is with a ton of picks to boot in the cupboard. 2-0 shutout. I don't know who it is, if it's Subban or Gus, but I love it. 42-27-9. What a story for Subban. What a story for Eric Stahl. Let's see the Pacific here. The Pacific Division. We are at 93 points. We're two points ahead of the Ducks. Three points ahead of the Canucks. Oh, the Kings are far away now. We don't need to go see the, the Kings. Let's go see the Flames, who are just three points above us. That'll be a better matchup. 
LA Kings 36, 32, and 9. We shut them out 2 to nothing. We shut. What? What? Grubauer, get out of here. Grubauer, I'll send you a postcard. I don't want to see you again. Malcolm Subban, you're going to be the angel on top of my tree this Christmas. Calgary Flames, here we go. Let's do it. First period, 2-2 game. Tarasenko scores both goals in the power play. Matthew Kachuk and Evgeny Malkin are scoring the goal scorers for the Flames. Second period, oh my goodness, Manson of all people score and scores. And then Palat on the power play puts us up 4-2. Coleman comes right back nine seconds later though. 4-3 Seattle, shot out shooting Calgary by two and we're up by one in the final 20 minutes here. Power play Calgary early in this third period. We kill it off. Power play for us and Vinny Trocek puts us up by two with a power play goal. 11 minutes to go now. It's a two goal lead over halfway through this period. And then Matty Beniers starting to put this one away. 6-3. That should be enough with under five to go and that'll be all she wrote, my friends. Manjapane adds one late. We get outshot 35-33, but we win it 6-3. For the final two goals a period a goal and three assists for our number one centerman two goals two assists for the captain goal and assist for palat a huge win against the flames is that enough to start thinking about did we clinch the playoffs uh yes we did there it is with 97 points and with two games to spare we have clinched the playoffs my friends when we were about to just call it a season eric stahl stood up in the locker room and said no no 4-2 loss against Vegas. We're going to end it off with this game against the Vancouver Canucks, who are very close. This might decide home ice for the playoffs between the two of us if we play each other, actually. So let's go out there and play strong in the last game of the year in Vancouver, just across the border. First period, 2-0. Schwartz and Bailey, I love you. Schwartz and Bailey. From free agency and from the expansion draft. Took him over Jordan Eberle. Pearson scores early there, and second period ends 2-1. to one. Shots 24-18 in our favor. Up by one in game 82 here. Third period action. Five minutes in. We're still out shooting them 28-19, but it's still a slight margin right now. Only one goal are we up on the Canucks. Six minutes to go. It's still a 2-1 game. If you want to hang on tight enough, that's okay with me. Two minutes to go. Vancouver throwing everything they have. Wow. What a third period shutdown. 32 to 27, we end up leading the shots and we win this one. 2 1 the final. Our goals from the first period were enough. Philip Gustafson, Gus the Bus, Gus the Bus, the legend from the NHL 21 Twitch series with the, with the Ottawa Senators. Oh my goodness gracious. The Seattle Kraken are in the playoffs and we were only three points away from winning the division. From almost not even making the playoffs, from thinking we were selling, we sell a few pieces, we trade away our number one goaltender. The pundits said that we were done. They said the season was over. But Eric Stahl and all the other leaders in the locker room, my throat's gone already, stood up and said, no, we are not done yet. We will not go gentle on that good night. And you know what we say here in Seattle, let the big dogs eat. We'll see the stats in just a moment. Let's start with the team standings here. So in the Pacific Division, we ended as the second best team. We were ahead of Calgary, Anaheim, and Vancouver. All very impressive. In the entire NHL, one point, I think we were 22nd when it was after the trade. I believe at the trade deadline, we were 22nd in the NHL. We finished 6th. 6th in the NHL. 45, 28, and 9. Over 3 goals, 4 per game. 2.85 against. Power play didn't get much better, but went up to 16.1. And penalty kill again went up to 83.4, so 16.1. Not at the not at the top, but I'd say it was closer to the middle. 16.1, uh, yeah, close to the middle there. And you look at the bar on the side. And penalty kill at 83.4, probably closer to the bottom. Eh? Yeah, a bit closer to the bottom, but still nonetheless. And let's see who had the best final 10 games here. We went 8-2-0, and tied three-way tie for the best final games on the road. We were killers. 25, 12, and four. We were giant killers. Wow. Wow. Got to catch my breath here. Let's check out the points and be ready to be blown away. The captain, Vladimir Tarasenko, he missed 12 games and he still led the team in not in goals, but in points and 80 points in 70 games is nothing to sneeze at. Vinny Trocek, his first season with us, number one center, getting paid $8 million. He gets career highs in goals, assists, and points. 26 goals. Sorry, not in goals, but in assists and points. Actually, not, assist, not in points either. It's true. Oh, no, it is by one. So in assists and points with 50 assists and 76 points. There it is. Vinny Trocek, the third round pick of Florida back in the day. 
Jane Schwartz, 20 goals and 55 assists for 75 points from him. The 85 overall career highs in assists and points. Great stuff to see there. After him is Andre Palat, who had six, uh, 46 assists and 64 points. Matty Beniers in his rookie season scored 36 goals and 20 assists for 56 points. I like that the, the shooting was not crazy. He didn't have 300 shots or 400 shots. 266. Jared McCann, 47 points. He started to turn things around a little bit. Not too shabby. Less goals, but a lot more assists than last season. Bailey had 41 points in the end. More of a third liner he became after scoring 55 points last season. Eric Stahl, man. Eric Stahl. A negative 12, but 34 points. Jake Bean had 34 points and was a plus 6. Pulak, 28 points and was a negative 2, which was a bit odd. Manson, 24 points and a negative 2, also a bit odd. Appleton, 18, negative 7. Alexiak, 15 and a plus 9. Hayden Flurry, 14 and a plus 15. Tanev, 12 points, negative 9 in 63 games. Foss did not play for us. Chalowski, 10 points and a plus 5 in 62 games. He had a lot of big minutes. Martin Kaut scored 8 points and was a negative 14 in 41 games. So maybe we fixed that bottom 6 around or something. Uh, Gardner played those three games. And Gauthier, 6 points, negative 12 in 52 games. Goaltending, oh my goodness, prepare yourselves. Malcolm Subban, oh my goodness. 20, 15, and 5. Three shutouts, 9-12 save percentage, 2.56 goals against average. For an 81 overall, playing as a starting goaltender, I will take that. Philip Gustafson, what did he do with us? I think he went off as well. Let's see with Seattle. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Who gets the start in the playoffs? He went four, after going 3-6-3 three, three this season with Ottawa. 900 save percentage and 3.2 goals against average. He goes 4-1-0 with a shutout. 944 save percentage, 1.79 goals against average. How did he do it? Gus the bus, man. Oh, what a season for him. Let's go see the entire NHL. Maybe any other players that were interested in seeing how they did as well. McDavid, 106 points. Kane, the Rocket Richard with 51 goals and 103 points there. Goaltending in the NHL, it was Marc-Andre Fleury with 42 wins and crazy numbers. That's absolutely and very easily a Vezina winning season for Marc-Andre Fleury, I would say. And rookie skaters, was it Matty Beniers leading the rookie scoring? No, it was Cole Perfetti. Not even close to Matty Beniers. Well, well kind of close, but still. Boris Zvitov, the first overall selection from Buffalo. The franchise snipers, already an 89 overall with five-star everything, basically. He had 65 points. And Cole Perfetti on the Jets, 85 overall now. He had a 66-point season. So probably between Perfetti and Zvitov. Looking at the Ottawa Senators here. So things didn't go much better for Philip Grubauer, actually. Uh, 9 7 and 0, but an 897 save percentage, exact same as he did with us, and then a 3.11 goals against average. So, not very good over in Ottawa. Was not ideal. They thought they were getting a big 86 overall X Factor kind of guy. And they, all, they had, all they traded was picks, but I don't know. Those picks might come back to bite them. I am very, very happy with how we traded these pieces that were kind of like uh, superfluous and then brought in picks and still had such a crazy good season. Also, can't forget to check out the Carolina Hurricanes. I'm not sure if they made the playoffs, but let's just see how their scoring did here. So, Cali Yarncrow ended up scoring, let's see how much he did specifically with the Hurricanes. Had a decent season overall. With Carolina, he scored 22 points in 41 games. So, almost a copy of his initial, of his first, of the first half of the season with us. In the second half of Carolina, less goals, more assists, better plus minus, more shooting. I'm not sure what line he played on, if it would tell me here. Yeah, he was playing on the second line, second power play. So, it made sense that the Hurricanes wanted to get him. Kale Fleury, let's see if they were using him. There's Lorenz, the guy they really wanted to keep. Kale Fleury did not play in all games. He played 38 games, had 7 points, and was a plus 18. My goodness. So, playing the second pair, first penalty kill. Yeah, definitely makes sense that they traded for those two pieces and that they put in a lot to get them. Was it all worth it in the end for both these teams, though, both Ottawa and Carolina? I am curious. So Carolina did just squeak into the playoffs there, but no, the Senators missed. Wow. 
They go all in on a new starting goaltender, and they miss the playoffs, ending 21st in the NHL. The Eastern Conference was weaker. The Hurricanes just squeaked in with a record of 41, 34, and 7. So keep note of how their playoff journey goes. Interesting that the 14th place Jets don't make it. Just a stronger Western Conference this year. So uh, Hurricanes with Yarn Crow and Flurry make it. Senators with Grubauer do not. And of course, the Maple Leafs won their division going fifth in the NHL. And Ryan Donato played uh, some, well, yeah, he played a role in that. Yeah, I'd say he played a role. He said, yeah, there it is. 10 points in 22 games with a plus nine. Crazy that they blow up as soon as they get traded away. But you know what? It definitely makes sense that they would have traded, what was it, a third and a fourth for him at the deadline? That's what deadline moves are. And in the real world, maybe he could have gotten even more. But solid deal. Everyone's happy. And I'm happy that all the trades in this episode seem to check the box for realism. Down in the AHL, how are things going there? Uh, we won the division at the conference 58, 19, and 5 the record. My goodness. Josh Hosang, 64 points. Gambrel, 63. Cole Lynn with 62. I'm happy to see that. He's still a 78 overall. Ryan Suzuki, he grew to a 75. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Remember that, that he was in the Kel Flurry and uh, Cali Yarncrow trade. And Ethan Bear isn't even here yet. We still have more coming our way. Barry Boulet, 58 points. He's still 78. Mason Shaw, he also grew to a 75. That's very nice to see. Our expansion draft pick from Minnesota. Honka, Seneshin, Heiskanen, the player that we got from the Washington Capitals. He's up to a 72. He scored 22 goals. Phillips, our pick from the Flames. He had 40 points. And Lozon, our pick from the Bruins. Kyle Wood, 27 points and a plus 41. What a unit. And goalies, Ville Husso. Yeah, crazy numbers for both goalies, especially for Husso. Good stuff there from Palm Springs HC. So with all this said and done, we can see who our matchup will be up against in the playoffs for round number one. Last year, we lost in the second round, game seven to the Anaheim Ducks. This year, in round number one, last year as well, we beat Vancouver in round number one. We are taking on the Calgary Flames, who went 45, 29, and 8. Almost an identical record. We had a better final 10 going 8-2-0. They are, went 6-3-1. and one. Very similar records. We don't have anyone from their expansion draft in our lineup as Phillips is in the AHL. Let's go see how things are looking on the Flames headed into next episode. Kachuk, Patrice Bergeron, and Lindholm. Manjapane, Malkin, and Zubi. That's it. How about this for a crazy top nine as well? Backlund, Monaghan, and Coleman. So one of the craziest top nines I've seen in a while. Lucic, Gotzi, and Godin as the fourth line. Defense, Valamaki and Anderson, Hannafin and Tanev, and then Giordano and Shillington. So very well-balanced team. Between the pipes, it's Markstrom, backed up by Adam Werner. Scratches, Ruzika, and Zari Zari. I think it's Connor Zari. So very, very well-balanced team. Uh, what are your thoughts headed into the playoffs here? Who should be our starting goalie? Should we touch up anything in our bottom six? Anything in our special teams? Anything on our defensive pairs? That's what I'm looking forward to hearing more from you all about. If you enjoyed this episode and this roller coaster, leave a like. Leave a comment either here on YouTube or on the Discord server. Link in the description with your thoughts on that as well as any of your suggestions heading into the 2023 playoffs. Honestly, just so ecstatic that we made the right moves we got a ton of draft picks i can't wait for the future drafts and here we are in the playoffs with a good record with a team that's clicking it does not get better than that as a general manager i'm gonna close it out there i need a glass of water i hope you enjoyed this episode also please do consider subscribing as well as you'll be made aware of all uploads here on the channel things like franchise mode as well as tutorials check out the tutorial for franchise mode tutorial for line chemistry the one on scouting is coming soon lots of other stuff happening here on the channel just a bit tight with time I'm currently with full-time work in school, but still getting as much out as possible for all of you because we are having a blast over here. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we will begin the year number two playoffs after a crazy push in the second half of this year.